welcome back. So our next speaker is Derek Simmel from Pittsburgh Supercomputing Center, also at Carnegie Mellon University. That's correct. And his talk title is The Brain Image Library. So good morning. Um, thank you for putting up with me for the next 20 minutes, uh, now that you're all jacked up on coffee and sugar. Um, I uh, am from the Pittsburgh Supercomputing Center. Uh, we are a department um, in the Mellon College of Science at Carnegie Mellon University, um, and we are um, uh, collaboration actually between Carnegie Mellon and the University of Pittsburgh. Um, I'll, uh, since this is uh, our, our first foray into uh, participation with IRODS formally, um, we have some history of users at our center who have used SRV in the past and who have used IRODS in the past, but we haven't really used it to um, actually implement anything for a project of our own, and so this will be our first foray into that, and uh, so uh, most of my talk is just to introduce ourselves and to um, welcome any, uh, any hard-won advice that you have as uh, experienced IRODS users to help us uh, get there faster, better, and cheaper, right? So um, I'll just briefly talk about the center and where this Brain Image Library project comes from um, and what we'll be trying to do with it and where IRODS fits into it. So, uh, as I mentioned, the center, um, it's been around for about 32 years, um, and uh, our general task has always been um, to uh, put out the next great high-performance computing system um, and to uh, do so in support, uh, primarily in, in support of National Science Foundation uh, objectives for um, computational science. Um, we have um, our staff of about 75 people is divided among um, science PhDs who are actually the active user support folks. Uh, we have a networking group that actually runs a, a regional NOC and provides networking not only to us but to regional universities. Um, we have a biomedical applications group um, that focuses uh, on biomed uh, science itself. Um, and then we have communications and of course the group that I'm in, uh, which is Advanced Systems, we actually uh, design, build, and deploy the systems. Um, we are involved in several um, uh, collaborations across the country. Our, uh, one of our big ones is XSEED, if you don't know what that is. It's a uh, National Science Foundation uh, project for cyber infrastructure that links the major high-performance computing centers together um, and allows us to interoperate with a common um, allocation scheme. So if you are an, an investigator affiliated with a U.S. institution, you can apply for time, resource, storage, network um, on our resources for free. Um, and that is peer-reviewed quarterly uh, through a process that is agreed upon by all the major centers uh, that are part of that XSEED program. Um, we also are uh, host to some unique resources. Uh, the Anton, which is a D.E. Shaw uh, custom machine for molecular dynamics code. Um, it is a uh, essentially hardware implemented um, molecular dynamics accelerator that runs faster for specific um, MD codes uh, versus any HPC machine you have out there. Uh, we are the only site outside of a private institution in New York City that, that has such a, th a device. Um, um, we are sponsored by um, 25 or more active projects at the, mo at the moment. Some of them are NIH, some of, most of them are NSF. Um, we have various other uh, U.S. governmental um, sponsors and also industrial uh, relations. Um, and as I mentioned, we also are a network service provider um, to the region. Um, we've put through a lot of first of uh, machines over the years. Um, and the more recent ones are in the bottom right. Bridges is a current machine. That was a, um, a machine we were most recently allocated by National Science Foundation. And as I mentioned, the Anton II is our um, molecular dynamics machine. Those are our major, major uh, machines now. Um, I'm happy to geek out with you about all the fun things we've done with all these machines in the past, but that's not what I'm here to talk to you about today, so um, I'll leave that till later. Um, so the NIH Brain Initiative. So the National Institute of Health um, has this very large initiative, multi-year, um, multi-million dollar initiative to bring together all the different 
um, brain science directions that are underway in the United States and in collaboration with uh, similar efforts abroad. And what they're trying to do is say, how can we bring everybody who's interested in their particular view of the, br of the brain, and the, the goal is toward understanding the human brain, um, from the point of view of tissues, of cells, of neural networks, of cogni cognition, um, and some of these are for developing therapies, some of these are just so that we understand how it works, um, but all is about trying to understand, you know, how this, uh, this computer we have in our brain is, in our, in our skull is working. Um, and they monitor, uh, 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 not monitor, I'm sorry, they, they support um, grants in, in this research activity for both um, investigation of the science and also infrastructure across these uh, categories. Um, in 2017, late 2017, they announced the awarding of 11 projects um, totaling about $250 million. These are long-term projects. These, um, our brain uh, li image library is a five-year project. Uh, and um, this project is one of these. Um, and the one that uh, I'll be talking to you about is the second from the bottom, so that's, that's ours. These are links, so when you get the slides, you'll be able to click on any of these if you're interested in what the other partners are doing. But the point is that all of these uh, projects are either consuming, using, or producing data um, that can be ideally um, collaborated across disciplines to help uh, develop our understanding of the brain. The Brain Image Library in itself is uh, just what it says. It's a library. Um, we're going to be storing image data, so it's not uh, text search data that you'll stick in a database and try to do smart database search things with or smart, um, uh, you know, Hadoop or other text searching fun stuff with. This is, this is image data, and it's coming off of instruments that um, today um, generate a colossal amount of data. Um, and they're trying to, although the, the various labs have some storage for the data that they are acquiring and the image sets that they're acquiring, um, they, it, they don't currently have a good way of sharing this data and correlating the data with other interesting um, things that they want to bring together. So um, just to introduce you uh, again, this is by way of intro introduction, our team at PSC. Uh, in the top left, we have uh, Alex Ropolewski. He's the P PSC PI on this project. Uh, Jacob Check is uh, co-PI art. And uh, Sean, our um, technologist. Sean is a student, actually. Uh, I'm the guy who'd rather be out sailing on the bottom left. Um, Kathy Benninger is a, our uh, networking expert. And uh, uh, I'll talk a little bit about her role later. Uh, that has been probably the most productive in our first uh, several months of the project to date. Uh, Greg Hood is our chief uh, computer scientist on the project, and he's the architect for uh, the actual infrastructure that we're deploying that's dedicated to the Brain Image Library. And Chandra is our web expert. Uh, she will be helping us uh, to develop our user interfaces uh, for both uh, data contribution and uh, data use. Um, we are also, our co-PIs at Carnegie Mellon are Marcel Bruchet and Greg Fisher. Uh, they understand um, what comes off of these devices really well and will help us to actually um, clarify and clean up data if needed and to validate data when it comes in uh, before we publish it. Um, and uh, also we have expertise uh, on the team from the University of Pittsburgh. Uh, it turns out Pitt has one of the most extensive um, imaging um, infrastructure is available in the country, and they're going to be providing a great deal of data. In fact, a lot of the test data that we've been using to date has been coming from Alan Watson and, and Simon Watkins here at, at the University of Pittsburgh. So it really is a regional collaborative that Im includes the center and scientists uh, at our regional universities in, in Pittsburgh. So the motivation, again, is that there's all this stuff um, in the brain that people want to to study, and we're trying to take um, sort of 3D volumes of images and then uh, apply what we think we see in all of those and, and uh, to, uh, to knowledge in a way that then can be reused and uh, reapplied for secondary processing. Um, if you look here very carefully, you'll suddenly see on the right 
uh, a strip appearing. So this is just a, a, a quick animation off of one of these confocal uh, fluorescence microscopes. And it's generating, um, these, these devices generate four terabytes an hour. The pixels you see here, they're a thousand pixels wide. So this is actually a very large image. And uh, we're talking about a mice, mouse brain here, which is maybe the size of my thumb, uh, end of my thumb. Uh, so it's quite small, even smaller. Um, and as you can see, uh, as we try to get to brains of interest to us, which is a human brain, um, with this current technology, even if we could image it, it would require about an exabyte of data, which is unwieldy today, right? Uh, nobody generally has that in their, in their machine room, um, at least not in a way that's uh, readily available. So we're not going to try to do the, the, the bottom end of that list, but uh, we are dealing with a lot of mouse brains, and we expect to get some marmoset brains. Um, brain image volume sets, I should say. We're not going to actually try to store the brains, obviously. But uh, um, let's see, how am I doing on time here? Okay, good. Um, just to give you a sense of what they'd like to be able to do, um, this is a 3D volume um, and an animation of, of sort of going through it. Uh, what happens in the lab, and I'm sorry for the, the judder here, but uh, is that to figure out where the neural pathways are, they will um, apply a stain, and the stain that they use is attached to a virus that is known to travel the pathways of the brain. So you imagine rabies or, or um, something like that. And as that um, virus uh, traverses across the brain of the subject, it, um, it, it basically allows us to detect it um, um, with the microscope um, through fluorescence. Um, and there are people who want to map this, and they will color certain areas of interest with different chemicals, and all of the metadata of the, um, of the experiment, how the subject was prepared, how the instrument was prepared, uh, when it was done, was it a left-handed white mouse from you know, this batch over there, all of that kind of stuff has to end up in, in the metadata somehow. And uh, for our concern, um, as big as this data is just to get the visual data set, um, we imagine that the metadata for this could explode per, per item. Um, so then, um, in, in accordance with, with all of our directors from the NIH for being collaborative and, and fair to everybody else, um, we need to support the fair standards and, and to uh, apply um, basically don't, no, no unnecessary invention of new stuff where we're trying to be compatible with all the people who might want to consume this data. Um, and at the same time, um, because it's such large data and, and, and it's Im impractical to move it around, um, although we are obligated to offer people the option of downloading data sets or pieces of data sets, um, realistically there's a reason we put it where it we did, and that is that we have a big honking supercomputer next door that can mount this data. Um, and um, I'll briefly, uh, whoops, sorry, um, switch here to give you an idea of, of what this is. This is a, um, uh, an anim oh, 3D um, uh, conceptual diagram of the Bridges supercomputer, uh, which is our current high performance machine at, at, at PSC. Um, it is a Hewlett Packard. Um, uh, vendor uh, pr product that is made up of, um, and I'll, I'll look at the, well, if I can do this correctly. Um, the bottom, the underside of this, uh, you're looking at, um, sorry, uh, the nodes at the bottom are your um, 120 gigabyte RAM regular nodes. So this is a machine that is uh, designed to work with large memory problems. Um, although it does have a high-speed Intel OPA interconnect between them. In fact, we were the first production deployment of said OPA interconnect, uh, which is a 100 gigabit um, um, switched network. Um, we have uh, about 800 of these nodes, and uh, the green nodes you see on the bottom are our graphics nodes. So we have NVIDIA K80s and, um, more recently, uh, NVIDIA P100s, which are very popular with our machine learning people, but also very popular with the people who want to do visualization. Um, and at the top of this diagram, you'll see in the same fabric, uh, we have nodes. Uh, we have about 40 nodes. These are the purple blocks. Uh, those are three terabyte RAM nodes. Uh, and um, 
perhaps not obviously, all of these nodes are multi-core devices. Uh, we're talking about, you know, 14 core CPUs, multi-CPUs per node. Um, and then the four big boxes are actually uh, uh, 12 terabyte nodes. So um, this is 12 terabytes contiguous memory. Um, those things are still about a half a rack today, um, and uh, they cost a lot of money. Um, <laughs> but they, they are also um, of particular interest to people who have very large data sets or who are doing data mining through very large um, data sets. Our genomics people really love those things. So uh, anyway, I'll, I'll go back to the, the main topic of interest. But the point is that we have uh, a lot of um, uh, computing and computational power and all the tools and um, capabilities that are available to the national community will be available um, to the um, uh, consumers of our image library. Um, again, we have collaborators who are submitting the data and we have users who are interested in using the data. Um, for a couple of the examples of the things that we're trying to do inside of the infrastructure that we're purchasing and deploying for the brain image library, um, one of the key features that is desired is remote visualization. So you're not moving the data, you're actually doing it with GPUs. Um, on our equipment and tunneling the the, um, um, the visualization through through the web, and for that we require some specialized hardware um, and uh, uh, something like VMware Sphere or Citrix Zentox. Um, we are also using uh, IROS for uh, data management, and we have started to for the last six months with. Um, Great help from Jason and Terrell. Um, we have kind of gotten ourselves up to speed for how we will use that to help manage our data sets and to keep an eye on all the operational aspects of when the data comes in, when it becomes uh, blessed for publication, when the publisher of the data wants to release it for other people to use, and so all the access controls associated with that, the various tiers of storage that we have. Uh, primarily, we have one very large parallel file system, but it will be backed up by a, a tape archive um, because we are, once the, once the um, contributors have given us their data, it is possible that we may be the primary copy of the data. And so our goals for IRODs um, are all of the things that we've come here for uh, this week to learn, and uh, in particular, um, I'm excited to hear about the new um, developments for uh, tiering of, uh, of, of storage, um, of automated audit, of being able to um, uh, kind of fire and forget on a lot of things that would otherwise require separate uh, pieces of software to, to monitor and maintain. Um, getting the data collections, currently we have several partners who are giving us uh, data and, and perhaps not surprisingly, even though these are multi-billion dollar uh, um, installations with lots of nice hardware, they, their network connection is often crap by comparison. And so um, we've done a lot of work in the last several months to help several of our collaborators even get their network connections to us uh, at a reasonable rate. Um, and um, that's been one of the, one of the biggest challenges um, um, we also have obviously the kind of metadata and as I mentioned before, there's all these different kinds of variables that we need to somehow accommodate and make available in, in ways that are searchable and, and, and sensible. Um, we have very good connectivity into the center. Um, we have 100 gigabit uh, internet to connectivity, 30 megabytes, uh, megabits per second on three, ten, um, three bonded 10 gigabit channels to commodity. Um, and we have a lot of uh, experience. That said, we still find the need to have the ability to send somebody a device. So we've got our uh, prototype brain ball, which is kind of like the Amazon snowball. Um, and we basically just ship a box in there. Um, you dump your data on it and you bring it back. So I'm looking forward to our uh, Western Digital members' uh, bigger disks coming in because I'm sure pretty soon we're going to need a bigger brain ball to send to people. Um, um, and finally, before I leave, I'd like to make sure we acknowledge um, folks who have helped us get this far already. We're just getting started in the game. Um, I appreciate everybody's uh, advice and, and um, uh, helpful um, presentations this week. It's been really a, a great learning experience. Um, and in particular, Jason and Terrell, who have been very patient with me, and I, I uh, sincerely appreciate that. 
Um, if you have any questions, you can send me email. It's at the top of the slides. Uh, alternatively, you can just um, email Bill support, and everybody on the team will get the will get the mail. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to entertain them now. Thank you. Any any brain questions? <laughs> and I'm out of time. See? No, it's, that it's, worked. It's pretty good. <laughs> it's pretty good. So. Uh, yeah, they are just getting started, but they they're going to start big. So. It's going to be very exciting so, to see how So they go. I'm actually looking forward to coming back next year, wherever the, it is, and saying, okay, uh, I wish we'd known this. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> or, you know, it was a really good thing I talked to uh, John uh, Constable because, or I, it's a really good thing I spoke to, you know, <laughs> because otherwise I would have gone way down in left field and gotten lost. So I'm uh, looking forward to exciting things, and we'll report next year. That's right. All right. Thank you. Well, thank you.